it's 4 p.m. We're driving from Santa Monica to Los Angeles on one of the most famously traffic-clogged stretches of freeway in the entire country. And having driven this route many, many times before, let me tell you, it is absolutely soul-sucking. This is the worst possible use of free will, spending your time sitting in a car in traffic, going from zero to five miles an hour over and over and over again. But Mercedes is working on a way to help make the wasted time of traffic a thing of the past, thanks to two new systems that they are now offering in the United States. The first is a traditional level two driver assist suite that now includes automatic lane changes. And the second is much more interesting, the level three drive pilot program now available in Nevada and California. While I'm trying to make my way home in time for dinner, please be sure to subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel and find us on all of your favorite social media and leave a comment and let us know how you think we're doing. You can also find a full write-up to the Mercedes-Benz Drive Pilot system at the link in the description. We're cruising along. I've got the level two driver assistance suite activated right now and it's set to 65 miles an hour maximum. Right now, obviously we're sitting in traffic, so it's kind of keeping distance between me and the driver in front of me very well, but I do have to keep my hands on the wheel However, once you've entered a suitable stretch of roadway, that means one with very clear lane markings and an appropriate use of a high definition map, the car will present a level three drive pilot opportunity to you via these two buttons on the steering wheel right here. Once they start to glow white, you simply press this button, either one of them to activate it. These lights start to glow turquoise and it gives you a little warning that you need to be prepared to take control at any time. Dismiss that warning, take your hands off the wheel and you are free to spend your energy and attention doing something else besides being actively engaged in the driving experience. And that's because Mercedes considers the car to be in charge of the dynamic driving task, to borrow a phrase from the Society of Automotive Engineers, making the person behind the wheel a mere fallback ready user. I no longer need to be actively engaged in the driving task, but I do need to be ready to take over if the system needs me to do so. That means I can't sleep, I can't move to another seat in the car, but while we're just cruising along, I can now devote my attention to other tasks. It's a really bizarre experience sitting on a traffic clogged freeway and being able to do something like watch the finest videos that YouTube has to offer, but that's exactly what you can do when level three drive pilot is engaged. Now I mentioned that there are a few conditions that have to be met before you can activate level three drive pilot. The first is that you need to be on an appropriately mapped road. Mercedes-Benz uses very high definition maps to help create the environment through which drive pilot works. With traditional GPS, you get accuracy down to perhaps the meter, but with Mercedes' high definition maps, you have accuracy down to the centimeter. That means that the car knows exactly where it is on the road at all times. And it's also why you don't get that kind of ping-ponging effect that you might get with a sensor-based driving assistance program. The car needs to make sure that you are ready to take over at a moment's notice. That means the windshield is clear of any fog, the headlights are on, the windshield wipers are ready to go in case you encounter any unexpected weather and that kind of a thing. Speaking of, this system will only work in daylight conditions where the weather is pretty fair. So if you are driving through rain, the car will send a takeover request to you and turn you into the driver. One of the other sophisticated features of Mercedes-Benz Drive Pilot is that it takes into account everything that's going on all around the vehicle, not just what's happening directly in front of or directly behind you. What that means is, unlike traditional adaptive cruise control that only takes into account the distance between you and the car in front of you, Drive Pilot will also keep an eye on things to the right and left, so that if you're approaching a zipper merge, for example, the car will leave just enough space for someone to be able to get their way in without that really aggressive braking procedure that adaptive cruise control sometimes suggests you to. Handing over the reins to a machine can be a little bit intimidating, but the drive pilot system does a good job of making it very approachable and user friendly. For starters, you have to watch an introductory video before the car will even allow you to engage drive pilot. It's eight minutes long. It tells you exactly how the system works and exactly the situations in which it can be activated. And so it really kind of helps with that confidence. You know exactly what you're going to get when you're driving down the road. The car also gives you lots of information inside the vehicle as well. You've got these turquoise lights on the steering wheel that I mentioned before. There's also some turquoise indicators on the climate menu and the entire driver information display has lots of data and everything like that showing you that you're following this car and that there's traffic merging from this area and your car is engulfed in a ring of turquoise indicating that drive pilot is active. 
On top of that, it does a very good job of keeping a reasonable distance between you and the car in front of you and keeping you perfectly centered in the lane lines. It's honestly so much better than any other level two system that I've experienced in that way, I think because it uses that extremely precise high definition map. We're not bouncing at all between the lane lines. We're perfectly centered and perfectly spaced. And if you really have a hard time wrapping your mind around the drive pilot system doing the driving for you, there are some cool apps that you can use to pass the time and distract yourself just a little bit. And remember, distraction is no longer a dirty word because the car is handling the dynamic driving situation for you. Here we're starting out with Shuffle Puck, which is one of the games that Mercedes includes in cars with the drive pilot system. Let's see how it works. It's really bizarre taking my eyes completely off the road, but let's do it. Ah, there it goes, he got me. There's definitely some intimidation factor the first time you turn the system on, but the way that it communicates with you about how to use it and how to engage it and everything like that really kind of takes some of the fear factor away and it turns it into a more exciting and fun experience. That's exactly how I felt. I mean, I've been covering cars for eight years now and I was there when, you know, that level two ADAS really started to come around for the first time. I remember the first time I felt a car tug the steering wheel in my hands. It was a mind blowing experience. And now I am completely disconnected more or less from the driving situation. I'm here to take over if I need to, sure, but I'm not doing anything. I'm not even paying attention to the road and it's not a bad thing. It's kind of an interesting time in which we live. There's a lot of this change in transition happening around driving and mobility. For example, Mercedes is accepting liability of any accident that happens on the fault, if you will, of a drive pilot system. If the person behind the wheel is appropriately engaged in the driving experience and actuates the system appropriately, then Mercedes will accept full liability if an accident occurs that's the fault of the drive pilot system. And the company is pretty frank in acknowledging that we are kind of in uncharted waters so far. I mean, this is the first level three system to gain approval for use on American roads. Right now, only in California and Nevada, and only in specific situations, that is under 40 miles an hour, on a traffic clogged freeway with a vehicle leading ahead. But that's what makes this situation so exciting. It's fairly well established that under controlled circumstances, a machine will generally make better decisions than a person. Now, it probably shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that it's a Mercedes we're driving in. After all, Mercedes was first to market with a level one system called Distronic in the 1990s, with the level two system following about 10 years ago. The best part of it all is, this takes the worst part of driving out of your hands. I love driving. I really enjoy a fast car on a nice road. I really love going for long cruising drives down the beach. I can still do all of those things in this car, but when I'm just slogging down the 405 or the 10, I no longer have to be just consumed with the constant thoughts of all the things I'd rather be doing. I can read a book, I can play with YouTube, I can play games, my passenger and I can watch videos. It's really kind of amazing the amount of time that you're given back when you don't have to just sit in 10 mile an hour traffic for two hours a day. So what's next for level three driver assistance? Well, first of all, it's only available in California and Nevada right now. And again, it's limited to speeds of under 40 miles an hour. So obviously the next step is expanding that usability envelope. Hopefully with time, Mercedes can convince regulatory bodies to up the speed a little bit so that we can have level three driving assistance when we're going 50 or 60 miles an hour, as well as in this stop and go situation right here. Ideally, the system would spread nationwide so that if you happen to be sitting in traffic across state lines, it doesn't deactivate when you cross through that little geo fence. Until that day comes, at least I'm lucky enough to live in California and have access to level three drive pilot so that I can do absolutely anything but keep my eyes on the road.